Welcome to Electron Line. Before we tackle stress tensors in three dimensions, let's take a look at a simplified version of stress tensor in two dimensions because it's easier to picture that and then to translate that into three dimensions. So here we have, instead of a cube on which forces are acting in all directions along the, along the sides and towards the, uh, the planes of the, of the cube, here we simply have a square, a two-dimensional square that has no depth, no z direction. And so we have two kinds of forces acting on that. We have forces that are either pulling away or pushing towards the two sides, the two opposite sides. So we have the two opposite sides in the x direction and the two opposite sides in the y direction. So the two components of the tensor right here that represent that are the diagonal components and they represent the, the pressure term or better yet, they represent tensile or compression forces, in other words, pulling them apart or pushing them together. So it depends on the direction. Are the forces acting towards the, the square or are the forces acting away from the square? Notice that the notation that they typically use is a sigma sub x or a sigma sub y. And of course, in three dimensions, it would be sigma sub z. But we have to understand that means in tensor notation, sigma xx and sigma yy. So that's what we're going to use in our tensor notation. So the diagonal components here represent forces acting towards or away from the sides, perpendicular to those sides. And so we call those pressure forces, pressure meaning force divided by area. They can either be tensile or compression. Tensile means that we're pulling them apart. Compression means that we're pushing them together, which is analogous to the direction of these forces are the forces acting towards or away from this square right here. Then we have another kind of force which acts along the side. So the force is pushing this way, this way, this way, and they usually appear in pairs and they're in opposite directions. So they pu push in this direction and here they push in this direction, which causes what we call a shear stress. A shear stress means that it's trying to deform the, the object like in this direction. If you push like this, you'll have a deformation that acts like this, as opposed to the simple pressure or tensile or compression forces where either pushing the object, making it smaller in this direction, or pulling on the object, making it larger in this direction. Here we're simply deforming it like that, where it gets squeezed in such a way that the top goes in one direction, the bottom goes the other direction. And of course, we could have the same thing over here, where you can see that this whole thing would kind of shear like this, and there would be shear stresses deforming the object like that. And those are what we call the shear stresses, and those become the diagonal components of this two-dimensional tensor format. Of course, if we now add a third dimension, the z dimension, then we're going to have a sigma zz, and then we're going to have these other four, what we call stress or shear stress components, which then represent the shear stresses in all directions. And that's why we need tensor notation, because the internal forces on an object in three dimension can be, we have the three directions, x, y, and z direction, which represent tensile or compression, or we can have the forces that act along the sides, at the top, on the side, and on the bottom, top and bottom, left and right side, front and back side. So we have six more sides represented by the six, what we call shear stress components, which then give us a nine dimensional stress tensor format and we'll show you what that looks like but at least now we can make the connection more easily when we see it in two dimensions so again diagonal components are the representing the the stress caused by pushing on the two sides from opposite directions or pulling away from the two sides in opposite directions and then the diagonal components the shear stress components they're the forces that act along the sides in opposite directions like this that cause deformation in that direction and that's how it's done.